Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Spetsbury in Dorset. It's about four miles southeast of Blandford Forum and 11 miles northwest of Poole. And we're going to be walking a roughly three and a half mile circular route. Fairly short, but there's lots to see. Initially, we'll be heading north to an old mill over the River Star to Tarrant Crawford to check out a redundant church on the site of an old abbey. Then we'll be coming back south over Crawford Bridge to Spetsbury and we'll be checking out an Iron Age hill fort, a disused railway line, and we'll have a look at a few other things in the village as well. Now I'm filming at the beginning of June. The sun is out, there's blue sky. Should be perfect conditions for a walk. So do come along with us. Now parking in the village looks a, a little bit tricky, but according to the Spetsbury Railway Station project website, uh, you can park your car at the primary school car park at the west end of the village, but only out of school hours. Well, we'll have a look at the village uh, right at the end of the video. Initially, we're going to head northwards and across the A350, which is the main sort of Blandford to Poole Road. Just passing by Clapcott's farm and Marcia's farm shop, which... Uh, Looks rather sweet and the farmhouse is just behind there and I believe it dates to the 17th century. <laughs> what a delightful little bridge over this, uh, well I guess this must be a little tributary that goes into the River Star which we will be seeing shortly. Very, very peaceful. Uh, have to we're quite close to someone's private garden here, so that's why I'm keeping my voice down. So another little idyllic part of the watercourse here. There's the reeds behind there. And this is the River Star. It's 61 miles long and rises at Star Head in Wiltshire flows into the sea at Christchurch Harbour. It's looking quite magnificent today. Just crossing another part of the stand. This is looking over to the uh, west. It looks quite serene today. It's a river that can flood. Just crossed a, a lovely meadow, which uh, looks like they've just cut, possibly for uh, silage, I don't know. And then just looking over to the, uh, to the east. It really is a, a beautiful part of the river here, that's for sure. Well, it's a glorious sunny morning. Time for some Whippet Zoomies.
quick update on the route. We've just crossed uh, this meadow, a footpath, and you can see a bridge in the far distance which crossed the star, and you can see we're just crossing another part of it here. It seems to sort of split up in two. But, um, I say sometimes at various parts of the winter this can be quite a raging torrent but it's uh, lovely and calm today. Probably we haven't had any significant rain for some weeks now. And this uh, rather pretty building here with the roses and wisteria outside. I think this is part of Kinston Mill, uh, an old corn mill by the river. I believe these days it's a, well, a bistro as well as a, well, it's got scented botanical gardens. They, they do tours and perfume workshops, I think. This is the, uh, the River Tarrant and it effectively joins up with a part of the River Star about 100 yards to my right and then carries on south and well, it effectively all becomes the River Star at Crawford Bridge at uh, Spetsbury. But the Tarrant, well, it's seven and a half miles long and it rises at Tarrant Gunville in the north and it gives its name to eight settlements along the way before it gets there. Uh, there's Tarrant Hinton, Tarrant Monkton. <laughs> I'll put a map up. <laughs> but Tarrant derives from a river liable to flood. <laughs> oh, everywhere's looking so lush and green at the moment. A beautiful sight with a blue sky, birds singing. Right, we're on our way to um, uh, Tarrant. Abbey Farm at Tarrant Crawford. Tarrant Crawford's not very big, it's basically just a couple of farms. Well, it's just about warm enough in the River Tarrant today. <laughs> Good boy. Now, if you look at an old map, there's the uh, remains of Tarrant Abbey annotated. I'm not 100% sure where it was located, possibly alongside here but I'm not 100% sure but it was established as an independent abbey in 1186 and refounded between 1228 and 1233 as a Cistercian nunnery but it was demolished after the dissolution of monasteries but well, apparently you can still see hollows and banks containing masonry and apparently there's a, a tithe barn that survives that dates the 15th century that has had alterations in the 18th and 19th century. Now, I did pass by a very old building. I wonder if that was, uh, that was it. But what is here is a rather sweet little church. It's the St Mary the Virgin Church. Now, the chancel dates back to the 12th century. The nave is 13th century. The porch, 14th century. And the tower, the 15th century. I think it's got three bells and there was a major restoration in 1911 but attendances fell after the Second World War and it became a redundant church and it's been in the care of the Church's Conservation Trust since 1988 I think but basically it's all that remains of the old abbey. In we go. The usual story, very dark. <laughs> I'll have to put some photos up but Gosh, obviously we've got the, the font here on my right. Just up here in front of me, there's some terrific paintings. And I believe they date from the 13th and 14th century. One set depicts the Acts of St. Margaret of Antioch, the Annunciation, and it dates from the 14th century. And it shows the, the winged figure of Gabriel and the Virgin and on the south wall, it's got two rows of paintings. The lower set shows three princes and three skeletons representing the emptiness of the earthly rank and riches. 
Right, so we've got the, the pulpit just here. Now, right by the altar, there's a couple of fascinating coffin lids to look at. Now, the one on the left-hand side with the cross on top relates to a chap called Richard Poor, and he was the Bishop of Salisbury. And indeed, he was the chap who started to build the, the new Salisbury Cathedral, uh, rather than the old one that was uh, up at Sarum. And it took something like 38 years to build, from about 1220 to 1258. But uh, Bishop Poor died in 1237, so I guess he didn't see it completed in full. But he was born and baptised and buried here. And the one on the right-hand side that hasn't got a cross on it and looks much older relates to Queen Joan, the uh, wife of Alexander II of Scotland, and she was the daughter of King John, and she died in 1238. Now, although most sources, including uh, Arthur Mee in his King's England Dorset book that he wrote in the 1930s, give that information, but um, the Church's Conservation Trust actually state that there's no association of these lids with either Queen Joan or Bishop Poor. Date on the route. We're now heading south back to uh, Spetsbury, following a footpath that's taking us along the side of fields with crops really beginning to, to come on now. This uh, sunshine that we've had over the last couple of weeks has been perfect for them. Well, very shortly we'll be heading back into Spetsbury and then through onto the, uh, the southern side. A few things to look at there. Probably not going to get a chance to look through the village itself because there's a very busy road that goes through and uh, obviously the, the sound of that will be too noisy. It gets its name from Old English Spiet, I think, which means woodpecker, and Birig, which means fort. Originally there were three manors or estates. Spetsbury to the north, Middle Street, which is around the, roughly where the village hall is today, and Great Crawford to the south. And uh, it gradually all got combined by about 1800. And by 1869, the Drax family was the major landowner. And at one time, there were five pubs in the village. Uh, the Castle Inn, which closed in 1914. I mean, the building's still here, but it's called the White House, I think it may have been a beer house. There was the Black Dog, or Dog Inn, which was by Crawford Bridge, well that burnt down in 1889. The Bugle Horn, well that burnt down in 1887. The Railway Inn, which closed in 1985, I think that's called the Railway House now. And then of course the Woodpecker, which was previously called the Drax Arms, but I think that closed recently, 2019. Uh, developed for housing. And then fascinating building in uh, the main street that goes through, St Monica's Priory, which shows on a 1901 map. Originally it was an 18th century country house, but in 1800 it was bought by some nuns and they ran a school here until 1861 and then sold it on. A number of different religious orders owned it until 1926 when it was sold to a contractor who demolished it the following year. But some of the old building does still remain and I think part of it is the village hall. Now the lovely church at Spetsbury is called St John the Baptist and it consists of a nave, chancel, west tower, north aisle, north chapel and south porch. And there's been a church on the site for centuries. 
and parts of the nave, arcade and north aisle date from the late 12th or early 13th century and the west tower is the late 15th century. The remainder of the church dates from around about 1858, apart from the North Chapel which was added in 1868 and there was another major restoration in 1895. Well, just along this little road that leads to Crawford Bridge, according to a 1901 map and a 1962 map there should be a couple of boundary stones here, but as regular viewers will now know, I can never find them and I haven't been able to find them, and the phantom Dorset boundary stone knicker has been at work again. And this is the rather magnificent Crawford Bridge, just on the northern side of Spetsbury. There's a first record of a bridge here in 1334, but the present bridge dates from medieval times. The western side is 15th century and the eastern side was rebuilt when the road widened in 1819. And it's got nine arches, the uh, angled buttresses upstream on the western side obviously to cope with the flow. You can see how important this bridge is. So this part of the river here is where well, the Star and the Tarrant merged. And then if I just slowly pan round to my left, that's where the well, sort of main part of the star comes in. And then crossing the other side of the bridge, hopefully the sun's not going to go into the camera. But from here on, it's very much uh, the star all the way. Oh, isn't that a lovely sight with the, the swan gliding along the star shortly to go underneath Crawford Bridge. Very serene too. Oh, I tell you that sun is quite glorious now. Okay well, we're now on the southern side of Spetsbury and we've joined up with an old disused railway line. More of that later but uh, we've got an Iron Age hill fort to check out first. This uh, oil seed rape, the flower long gone and the pods, the seeds inside there won't be long before they'll be harvested. They're a, a black sort of seed. Now I'm not really sure how much of this I'm going to be able to see but on a map it shows as Spetsbury Rings. It's an Iron Age hill fort. It's also known as Crawford Camp or Crawford Rings and it covers about five acres and it's very much oval shape. There's a single embankment all the way round which is about four and a half metres high and there's a, a ditch 13 metres wide and a couple of metres deep. There's a single entrance to the north but historians reckon it was never fully completed. Probably the Duratrigues tribe lived here. But in AD 43, the Romans, the, the second legion Augusta, seized it, as they did with just about every other Iron Age hill fort around these parts. And they actually built the railway through the, the northern part of the fort. And when they were making the, the cutting for the track, they discovered a mass grave of between 70 and 80 skeletons, and then another mass grave of another 40 skeletons possibly uh, the remains of Roman soldiers and members of the Duratrigues tribe after their battle. Who knows? Ah, just on the southern side of the fort it's uh, much easier to see the embankment and ditch. Oh, look what I've spotted in the distance. A trig point. You know what that means, Logan? Well, here we are at the, the trig point and Yes, it has been bagged in the customary and traditional fashion, 265 foot above sea level. But seeing as we're up here, well, let's just take a look at some of the, the views. So this is, uh, must be looking over to the 
to the west. But if I just gradually pan round, I'll give you a 360 degree view looking to the north. And it is really your, I always say this, your traditional Dorset rolling landscape. And then uh, over to the, to the east, Obviously, there's the fort where we've just come up, and then <laughs> this will take us to the south. Right, so we now need to drop down off the fort and uh, rejoin that disused railway line. Oh, wow, look at this, the old railway station at Spetsbury. Well, I mentioned uh, that it was a disused line already. Uh, the station here was opened in 1860 by the London and South Western Railway as part of the Dorset Central Railway that later merged with the Somerset Central Railway to uh, become part of the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. I think that was in 1862. But the Dorset Central Railway started to be built in 1857 and was ready in 1860. And it was originally 10 miles of track that linked Blandford in the north and Wimborne in the south. And in 1862, the line was extended northwards and the Somerset Central Railway line, which ran from Highbridge near the Bristol Channel to Glastonbury, was extended southwards. And the lines joined up just north of Cole in Somerset and the merged Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway thus linked Bath to Bournemouth. Anyway, it all transferred to the Southern Railway Group in 1923 and it became an unstaffed halt here in 1934. And the station, or halt, closed in 1956 and the buildings were demolished in 1958 and 1959 but passenger trains still used the line until 1966 and goods trains until 1969. The track was finally lifted up in 1970. But in 2012 the Spetsbury station project was established by volunteers to preserve aspects of the site and I think the land is actually owned by Dorset Council. But as far as the history is concerned, well, originally it was a single track with just one platform on the north side, which was the down line with a timber waiting room and booking office. A second platform was added on the southern side, the up line in 1900, and the track became double tracked in 1901. And I think that was when a brick waiting room and booking office was built. But milk from nearby dairy farms and watercress from beds north of the village were dispatched daily from here. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a, a super walk today. The weather has been glorious once again. And we've seen lots of interesting things and what a super place to, to finish at the old railway station. As you can see, one of us is already in snooze mode. We haven't got far to go along the disused track back to the car. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Well, can I tempt you to a sweep? I thought you might. <laughs> <laughs>